Welcome to Fallout 4 intro video, where I go over why I'm playing the game, the way I'm playing the game, and also mod talk. I wanted to do this as a separate video before I get to the actual let's play. Uh, list of mods will be in the description of every single video. Big, big, massive thank you to the modding community who keep making this game more and more fun to play. The same as all the other moddable games out there. But firstly, this will be on very easy difficulty, at least to begin with. Uh, the main re main reasons for that is explained in my channel intro video. If you really want to go watch that, then go and watch that. It, it is in its own, well, playlist on my channel. Uh, the short and sweet of it is that there is this massive stigma in many of the gaming communities that if you play on the easiest difficulty setting your opinion and game experience and everything else is completely invalid i want to battle that i want to combat it so i'm playing this on very easy to begin with i might crank up the difficulty later but to start with this will be on very easy difficulty now let's talk about mods because as i mentioned i am playing on pc uh, I will be adding mods which, for the most part, do not affect the game's balancing and don't really change the vanilla experience too much. Like, that's the main cause of action here. I want to want this to be as close to vanilla experience as possible for anybody who's, you know, watching this let's play. But also, I want to have still access to certain things. Um... Couple of things, speaking out of the mod list, you will have the en entire mod list in at the bottom of this. Uh, I'll grab up a couple of the things which pop out, pop up from out there and talk about those. For example, um, I am using certain things which make life a little bit easier. For example, I'm using a mod called Clean Soup. It allows you to make the various cooking soup items from purified water. When in base game, all of those are done with dirty water for some odd reason so that, that obviously like you know okay this makes sense to me um another thing which i'm doing is um change a mod which changes the perk requirements for all crafting stations to, away from local leader 2 to something which makes more sense for example you need armor or you need gun gun nut and stuff to make armor smith station and weapon smith station this to me makes more sense than having it all bundled under local leader. I'm using uh, some outfit mods, I'm using the CBBE body mod to get some visual things going. Um, the armor collections by Eleonora, uh, Ellis armor collection rugged outfits specifically, those two running. Um, they are armors I can craft, but I don't need to. I don't need to craft them, I just happen to have them here if I decide to, because they are very nice armors. I really, really like what, what has been done with those. Very, very nice. Um, I'm using certain UI mods to make sorting the inventory easier, because frankly, a lot of Fallout is looting things and lots of inventory management, and the base inventory management is not very good. That's just how I feel about it. I'm using Clean Power Armor HUD to make it so that you can see better when you are using Power Armor. The intention of this play though is to, like, use almost no Power Armor. I'm using couple uh, mods which change the settlements uh, a little bit. For example, Infinite Settlement Budget. I didn't see the point of having such tiny, small settlement budget. I don't know if I will be actually building settlements much, but I'm just running it anyway if I decide to use play, play around with those. Um, I'm using a dog bed for a dog mate. Instead of the dog mate having to be in a, you know, dog house and now has a bed to sleep on. This kind of little things. Um, don't call me settler. Absolutely brilliant mod. Gives names to the settler so they aren't called settler. They actually have their own name. Very, very fantastic. Um, full, full dialogue interface. Makes more interface mods. Makes the dialogue easier to navigate instead of being like one word which doesn't tell you ex you know what you are actually trying to say all that stuff key remapping done proper another brilliant mod because there are so many hard bound hard coded keys that it made no sense whatsoever because i changed my key binds away from the defaults lowered weapons i never liked the way your character is pointing gun at somebody you're having conversation with uh 
if you consider post-nuclear world, those people would neither have a conversation with you or they would shoot your head off for keeping your gun constantly pointed at them, you know? Because that would be kind of a bad move, right? Um, then I have a couple other things which you could consider, uh, possibly consider, cheat mods. Um, these I wanted to leave uh, for the final and now talk about those before I finish this video here. Um, I am running a mod for called No Railroad Ballistic Weave. Uh, you, if you have been, played the game, you know what that is. Essentially, it puts a holotape in another location than Railroad HQ to get access to Ballistic Weave. Alright? So, essentially, if you decide you don't want to do anything with Railroad, I have no idea if that is going to be the case for this uh, Let's Play, but that's what I'm running because, to me, it made no sense that uh, you have to cozy up to certain somebody to get access to this. Uh, anyway, anyway. But, the two things you could consider cheat mods. Personally, I cannot consider anything cheat in a fully single-player game. Whatever you do with your game, does not affect the game experience of anybody else, but these two you might consider cheat mods. Easy hacking and easy lockpicking. Uh, I was very, very, very extremely disappointed when I came to the hacking minigame and lockpicking minigame of Fallout 4. There has been no innovation since Fallout 3 to basically either of these minigames. They are completely and utter time wasters, they are not difficult, and Frankly, I just find them annoying. It's like... So I run two mods which make them that much easier. Lockpicking firstly, uh, it changes the sweet spot of the locks to always be up. Essentially, all you have to do is hold down a key and it always opens the lock. Um, I never ran out of lockpicks the first time I played the game without the mod. I never ran out of lockpicks. I had no issues whatsoever, so I see no point spending uh, minutes and minutes of time on picking these locks, because that's not an issue. And also, uh, the hacking minigame, uh, they don't completely lock you out of a terminal now if you fail enough times. Uh, you have a, you know, very short period of time when you cannot access the terminal, then you can retry. I saw, I see no reason whatsoever to spend my time doing the hacking minigame instead I'm using a mod which removes all the wrong choices and only leaves the right choice. Because everything else is just a time waster and there is no real reason to do that. If they had actually implemented a much more interesting hacking minigame or a much more interesting locking mi lockpick minigame, I would have loved that. But there is no innovation since Fallout 3 at all on these minigames. I am frankly not interested and so I'm using two mods to make my life so much easier on those. If that is not okay with you, you are welcome to not watch my Let's Play if you find that to be too much of a cheating for your liking. Anyway, as mentioned, uh, the entire mod list will be in the description below. Thank you very much for watching, and we will move on to the Let's Play itself in the next video.